So what I want to show you is just how to get VelociRaptor server working on Azure Cloud and how to do this one investigating a pup because that shows you the dirty tricks. So I've got two Azure machines. Let me there. So in Azure, there, I've made two machines. I've got a Windows 10 machine and a Debian machine. And as you can see, they've got public addresses. The Windows machine has an address starting with 13 and the Debian has an address starting with 20. And uh, I downloaded a signature file so I can connect to my cloud machine. And so here's my Debian Linux machine in a command prompt. And if I do IPA, this is the fundamental problem. The local address on this Debian machine is a 10.5.0.4. So the Debian machine is behind address trans address network address translation. So it, the only address that the software can see is this 10 dot address. And then somewhere in the Azure network, there is a virtual router, which has this public address over here that starts with 20, which points to the same machine. So for traffic coming from the outside, I have to use this 20 address. And for listening processes on the inside, I have to use this 10 address. And that can get a little confusing. In addition, there is an Azure Cloud firewall limiting what traffic can get in here. And I have to open those ports. So I, um, when you set up your VelociRaptor server in 371, if you're working in the cloud, the installation works fine. But the problem is when you're done, it's going to show you that it's listening on a local address here. Like this one's 172.16. Let me show you what mine says. If I run this one, there we are. Uh, all right, it's already in use here. For some reason, I have to kill the process manually. So I do um, ps, I do sudo netstat. Minus pant will do. Okay, VelociRaptor is already running and it is 22.32, so I can kill it here. Sudo kill there. Okay, and now I can start it again. And by the way, I had to run it with sudo, which I don't understand why, because it's only listening on a high numbered ports on a not administrator uh, account should be good enough. But for some reason in the Azure cloud, I had to run it with sudo. But anyway, see here it's going. And so now it tells you, oh, look at this, right? That's now this is because I modified my configuration file. So it actually has the right public address here. So let me take it back to the original configuration. Um, if you follow the instructions, it tells you to uh, do a sudo nano etch a Velociraptor. OK, it tells you to change this address inside here to your local address. And my local address which work, turns out to be fine. I was trying all sorts of things for another purpose. This is my local address. OK, so let's do this. And I'm just going to make it the way it will be if you've been doing the instructions. 13, 72, 81, 23. That should be my, whoa, I hit the wrong button. Crap, Control W, R, there. So I replaced it five times. Oh, OK. Right, I changed the other bind. I changed all the bind addresses to 0000, by the way, which is fine. That will listen on all the available interfaces, which amounts to the same thing. So this should be the normal situation. So now if I kill my Velociraptor, which is a little screwy, but somehow, oh, OK, it stopped this time, right? Previously, it wasn't stopping, which confuses me. But anyway, now I run it. OK, now. See, this is what it'll tell you. It's listening on 10.5.04.88.89. And if you try putting that in a browser, you're not going to be able to see it because that's a local address. So the software inside the cloud server is listening on that 10 address, but the um, Azure network is forwarding it to this 20 address. And so you actually connect to it on the 20 address here. Uh, excuse me, the 13 address for the Debian machine, the 20 is for Windows. So that's where you actually go to see the panel. But 
You won't see it unless you open the cloud firewall because you have to let port 8889 through to see the GUI and you have to let port 8000 through to let your clients connect. So you have to let the firewall open. And let me see if I can figure out the easiest way to find the firewall here. If I go to my Azure machine and then uh, networking is here. Yeah, that'll do it. Azure networking and see here you have rules. And I've already got a rule to open port 8889. You add inbound port rule here. So you'd add a rule and you have to let through TCP 8889, which I did already. So um, anyway, that's where you go to do it. And after you've done that, you'll be able to see the home page of Velociraptor here from outside, like your host machine. Now, the next thing is you have to make your Windows client phone home to this public address, not to the private address. So if you go to the steps in this project, um, after that, you have to make the Windows client. And so let me just do this where here's where you make the client configuration. Let me go to my command prompt here. I'm going to stop this running service. All right, so here, uh, let me clean out some stuff here. I'm going to remove all the repackaged stuff and remove the client stuff. There. All right, now I've got nothing here. I can move that. Sure. Okay, there. This is the way you'll be if you've been doing the project. You'll have, uh, oh, the client config should have been gone. Oh, and I spelled remove wrong. All right. There. So the only thing I have are the two executables here, the Linux, the Windows executable and the Linux executable. All right. So now I'm going to make the client config, which is this. You run the Linux executable using the config, the main config for Velociraptor, and then you create a client config. And now if you look at that client config, it's got this local address in it. So your Windows client is not going to be able to phone home to that address. So I added this in the um, instructions here. I put one up here telling you to open the firewall, and I put one here telling you you're going to have to adjust that address. So I need to get the public address of my Azure server, which is here, this 13 address. That is the address that the Windows machine has to connect to. So I have to put that in this client file instead of this. There. And now you configure the client server the same as the instructions do, and then you go to your Windows machine and you bring the client configuration down and run it the same as uh, in the instructions. Connect with uh, WinSCP, bring down the client and run it, and you'll be fine. So it's now connected. As you can see, it's connected to HTTPS 1372. Another thing, by the way, that's kind of fun, in the project, you installed it as a service, which is what you do in a real deployment. But if you're trying to troubleshoot problems, which I have been, you can also just run it with client minus V on this we ran the front end minus V on the server, so you can see it. If you do this, it runs right here in the terminal, and it prints all messages here, so you can tell what's going wrong. And now, there's another thing that goes wrong, which affects the next project, which is what I spent the last couple of days struggling with, and I reached a resolution of it. So now, my client is running. Let me make sure my Velociraptor server is running. It is not, so let me get it running. Um, it is sudo... Okay, there now the uh, front end. Okay, it's already in use. This nonsense is happening to me again. Pseudo net stat minus pant. I don't understand how it keeps running even when I stop it. Anyway, pseudo kill. There's always a few goofy things. Kill 1246. Uh, no, 3281 is the velocity raptor. 3281. Okay. Now, okay, now I can run it. 
Okay, now it's running. So I have the server running, I have the client running. And now if I go to here, um, I should be able to go home and then show all. And here it is with a green dot by my server 2016 data center. That's strange. This is Windows 10, I think. <laughs> oh, I actually think I did use a Windows Server for some unknown reason. All right. Anyway, um, all right, anyway. I don't know why I'm using a server version instead of a Windows 10, but anyway. Um, just what I had set up there. Anyway, now I'm in. And so now if I go to Collected, I can do netstat, for example, to see if it's working. Netstat. Here's Windows netstat. So you launch that, and it runs, and it finishes, and it gives you results. So I'm connected to the Windows client, and it's taking commands. But the thing that was uh, messing up the student that's been asking for help the last couple of days is when you try to do this project, you're supposed to run auto runs. And Netstat works, but auto runs does not work. So let's try that. If I go to auto runs, Sys Internals auto runs, and I launch it, and look at the log here, it Remove some temp file on the Windows machine, and then it waits 16 seconds. Yeah, well, you're going to see how I got it. You could, I'm not, I didn't really get it fixed. What I did was find a workaround. There's a real problem here, which I was unable to fix, but I was able to find a workaround. So here, here's the problem. It tries to install auto runs, and to install it, it tries to get it from the server, and it uses the private IP address of the server, which it can't reach. So it doesn't make it. And I tried changing all the addresses and all the config files, and it didn't help. And I finally figured out what's going on. It's in the script for this thing here. And I couldn't quite figure it out. So one solution, by the way, would be to rewrite the VQL script. But I couldn't figure out how to do that. So I had another sleazy option. Since you can't install things automatically from Velociraptor, I made a workaround, and here is the workaround in a blue box. The blue box is for the Azure stuff. What you do is you manually install auto runs on your Windows box and put it in the root of C. Auto runs SC64. Then there's a artifact in Velociraptor that will just let you execute any command. So let's so what I did was first I went to my Windows desktop here and I installed auto runs. So I just downloaded it, unzipped it, and put it here in the root of C. Auto runs C64. That's the command line version of auto runs. So now it's on there. And there is a catch-all Velociraptor tool that will just run any command at all. So you can go to that one. I, I was hunting for it. I just hunted for shell, and it's here. Shell, you can run Windows command shell or PowerShell. Just generic. So I just used the command shell. You could use PowerShell too, I imagine. And now you can just put in any command you want and see the results. So all you have to do is go to configure parameters. And now that the software you need is on the box, it gives you an example, dir C. You have to run this, C auto runs 64, and then the command line parameters for auto runs. And there, it will run that command on the server and let you see the results. So this is a uh, sleazy workaround, but it will get the job done. <laughs> and by the way, if you wanted to do it all remotely, you could deploy auto runs with group policy in a, in a Windows domain environment. So it's not entirely unreasonable to say that you could already have the software installed on the box automatically. Um, but there it is, and now you can go to the results, and now you do get a list of all the auto runs in a sort of a CSV file. But anyway, uh, so this is a workaround. 
And this will apply for uh, Sysmon when you get there. Anything that installs from Velocity Rafter, you'll have to do it this way. Although, by the way, it occurs to me, if you were really cool, you could execute command line commands to fetch it from the web and install it. There's a command called bitsadmin that will actually download, like wget on Windows. In fact, I think there's now curl on Windows. PowerShell has curl. So you could do the whole thing by executing several commands. You could execute a curl command to download the installer, and you could execute some kind of command line command to install it. So you could do it all remotely in Velocity Raptor. But anyway, this will get us there. <laughs> um, and to understand the problem, um, if you go here and look at the auto runs artifact, See, I, I thought the address might be in one of those configuration files, but it's not. I took all that address out of the configuration file, and that did not fix it. So then I looked here at what this auto runs thing does. And you've got the source of the artifact here. So it, um, this is the thing. Let binary select tool named auto run from here. This somehow, and here's execve bin.0 full path split string. See, this is somehow the deal. And this bin zero thing and this full path thing somehow includes that 1005, that local address. So you would have to modify this. In fact, I might be able to even do it still. If you were to just change one of these, you could probably take some part of this and manually type in the public address here. Or if you were really cool, you could get the source code for Velociraptor and find out what variable you need to change or something. But anyway, these variables here are what fetches some uh, database inside Velociraptor that has the listening address stored. And that listening address is wrong. So, you know, if you were cool, you could fork Velociraptor and modify it to have another address and all that jazz. But I don't think it's worth it because Rapid7 is undoubtedly doing that right now. This is exactly the kind of thing that gets fixed when you go from like an open source project run by volunteers to a professional product run by a professional company. I'm sure they will patch this up. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure they will offer Velociraptor in the cloud where you just pay and use their cloud server that's got everything set up for you already, the way Splunk does. Splunk now has Splunk Cloud, where you don't set up anything. You just connect to their cloud server and that sort of thing. So I'm sure that within six months or so, Rapid7 will come out with the professional Velociraptor version that will clean all this up. So anyway, um, that's what I wanted to show you because I was pretty uh, disgusted that I couldn't solve this problem over the last couple days, and I'm glad I finally found a solution. And I learned a little bit more about how Velociraptor works. I really like Velociraptor. It really is logical. It does things in a nice, simple way. You can easily find the code that's doing something. It's, it's a wonderful tool. It's, it's not like mind-boggling and confusing. It just does everything in the simplest, cleanest way possible. That's why I, I really think this is uh, going to go far. All right, and that's what I wanted to show you.